What questions do you have about model rocketry? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We put out a survey to customers and viewers on this channel about what specific questions that they want me to answer. And we got probably almost two dozen questions that came in. And today I'm going to try to answer them. So let's get started. Hervey3693 says, I'm wondering what is the best way to try to make our model rockets reach a predetermined target area? And what engines or processes of building the rocket beforehand can best work to do that? Okay, so the question is, how do I hit a target? And the answer is, we don't hit targets as model rockets. If you're trying to hit a target, you now have a ballistic missile. If you have a ballistic missile, the FBI is going to want to talk to you. And so we don't hit targets. Now we try to avoid targets. And this is where we want our rocket to come down in a specific area to avoid trees or streams or ponds or houses or things like that. And again, what I would recommend is Roxim or Roxim Pro software. So here I have a rocket and I'm going to put a rocket motor in it real quick and I'll show you what you can do with this. So I've, I've loaded an E24 in here. It'll, my launch conditions look fine. Here's my wind. I don't have any wind. Let's add some wind. Let's add like a five mile an hour wind to this rocket and then hit flight profile. And what's going to happen is Roxim is going to run a simulation and then it's going to give us a three dimensional view of this rocket taking off. So um, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. So here we have the rocket sitting on the pad and I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of get the lay of the land. So the rocket is like right here where my cursor is and we hit the play button you'll see the rocket taking off you see a mini view of the rocket as a close-up view of the rocket and this pink line here is the trajectory and we can see the rocket has gone 2400 feet high so it went really high i'm going to speed things up and make it come down and it's going to land approximately like right there i don't see any trees in this area so that's a really good landing zone but it, it landed about 1011 feet away way and I can zoom out you know and kind of you know like I said this is 3D so you can actually see where the rocket's going to land down here in the corner is a compass get kind of the direction so it's I'm drifting kind of east with this specific rocket over here I've got some hills and some trees that I want to avoid so this is actually a pretty good launch so if my rocket was going to land over there now I want to avoid that area so then I would use the software to angle it in a direction and I could angle it and then watch what it does and see if I've missed those places where I don't want the rocket to land. So we're not trying to hit something, we're always trying to avoid something. Mark Cell 897 writes, is it worthwhile to dimple fins like a golf ball for more stability? And the answer to that one is no. Dimpling is not going to add any stability to the rocket. Now, this is another depends answer. So golf balls are dimpled to lower the drag so that they go farther. But we don't dimple rockets because it's a different type of situation. In a golf ball, it's very round and it's very blunt kind of like that squared off leading edge. And if we could streamline it, you know, that teardrop shape, that would be better, but we can't do that with a golf ball. So a golf ball flies through what we call turbulent air. The air hits the ball and then it just starts making a wake behind it. And those dimples add a little bit of, no, I wouldn't say they add energy, but they allow the turbulent airflow to curve around the backside and fill in the vacuum behind the ball because you got the ball going this way and it's pushing the air in front of it and it leaves like a little vacuum behind there. And having turbulent air filling that in as quickly as possible makes the golf ball fly further. But in a model rocket, we're not long. We have very long things. So we, what we have is laminar flow 
instead of turbulent flow. So you're going to have laminar flow over the nose cone. Somewhere over here, it's going to start going turbulent. Boundary layer is fairly small. So we want to avoid any dimples or anything that protrudes outside of the rocket or we're going to add more drag. So like on this rocket, I have launch lugs and those are going to add drag, unfortunately, but we do need those for stability. Dimples don't add stability. They reduce drag on blunt body vehicles. So we don't want to dimple. We want to make it nice and smooth. So you want to get that smooth paint finish, you know, and fill the grain on your fins to make it low drag and also airfoil it again, you know, to get rid of that blunt body on the leading edge. Scotty7671 says, Tim, been loving all the videos and learned a lot. What tips do you recommend for traveling internationally with rockets and motors? Okay, so one, you can't travel internationally with motors, except for maybe if you drove to Canada or Mexico, <laughs> but you can't take them on an airplane. That's like prohibited against the law. They will throw you in jail. So you're not gonna take motors with you on an airplane you have to ship them there ahead of time. And shipping internationally is very difficult, which is why currently Apogee Components, we do not ship motors internationally, even to Canada or Mexico. The, the regulations are just, there's just too many of them. Now your rockets, as long as there's motors are not in there, you can take them because they are non-explosive and they can go in your luggage. And that's the way we take them when we go international. You want to protect them. Um, I'm going to Serbia this summer and we're gonna be taking our rockets and they are, our rockets are very fragile. So we're gonna protect them we're going to use a hard-sided suitcase to prevent anything from, you know, a soft-sided suitcase, you know, with fabric on the outside. Yeah, you don't want to use that. You want to be hard-sided and you want to put padding in there. We're going to actually not put the fins on until we get overseas because fins are easily knocked off and we can put the fins on. That's pretty easy. We're just going to bond them on with epoxy anyway. We'll just take our fin jig, slip it on the back end, We'll just do that when we get to the hotel. We're going to bring epoxy. Epoxy you can bring on an airline. It's, again, until you mix it, it's going to be fine. That's the trick on traveling. Um, we also take our rockets as carry-on luggage so that they don't go underneath. Because when you travel international, luggage often gets lost. And so you can't lose your rockets if you're on a competition team like we're going to be on. So we're going to put those as carry-on. And uh, we'll also pack a small change of clothes and a toothbrush in there with the rockets. So we have that to get to the hotel. And in case they lose our luggage, which has happened, especially if you go through France, I don't know what's about France, but France seems to lose <laughs> luggage. So you'll have a change of clothes and, and you can brush your teeth and then you can go to the store and buy new clothes until your luggage finally catches up to you. Typically the luggage does catch up, but it can take up to a week. Ross Warren 436 on YouTube asks, you might have already done these, but maybe put links to them if you have. A series of videos on finishing and painting rockets to get nice, clean, straight lines would be great. All right, so I have done a lot of videos on painting rockets. Uh, you can see there's a, there's 435 is painting a nose cone. But um, there's a series I did on a repair starting at video number 340, how to restore and repaint a rocket that has been damaged. So this has a very good series on painting because we had to strip all the paint off and then reapply. So it's kind of like once you strip it off, you're, you're back to where you started anyway. So you'll put down your primer, you'll put down your paint. I'll show you, you know, putting down the tape. You don't want to use blue tape, not for the lines anyway. If you want the crispest lines, you actually want to use cellophane tape, clear cellophane tape. The problem with clear cellophane tape is it's a plastic, and when you paint it, the solvents can attack the cellophane plastic and soften it. And so when you try to rip it off, it just kind of tears. So it's a little bit harder to get off, but man, does it leave like a perfect line. 
The next best thing is green automotive pinstriping tape. It's a little bit thicker and it will actually do all around curves, like not so much the curves around the circumference, but you know, along a nose cone, that's a, that's a tough curve to paint. So start with there. It's a six part series and that starts with uh, video number 340. So thanks for watching. If you have other questions, just, you know, be sure to come to the Apogee website. You'll find our contact form there where you can ask your question. We also have this free newsletter. Please be sign up for it. It's like where you get all this information. Like I said, you know, you saw we, how many hundreds of videos we have, hundreds of newsletters that we have. Well, you get notified of these newsletters every week because we put one out every week and they're all great how-to information like what you're watching right now. So be sure to subscribe to that newsletter. Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.